Hamel the X works, that's not a problem. But this extra microphone, uh, last week this was changed somehow so that they can hear me. And I don't think it's uh, picking up right now. <laughs> There's nothing. <coughs> And uh, <coughs> you can see it's on. It's not on. It's it's picking up, but it's not picking up on the voice. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to start. You can look. <laughs> <coughs> What did you do? <laughs> yeah. PC? No. <laughs> okay. Um. <coughs> okay, we're working on the microphone issue again. Um, but in terms of <coughs> the first exercise is due February 11th. And you have to have it in my email by 10 o'clock in the morning on February 11th. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> just, just to make you wake up before we get started. <laughs> um, <coughs> but <coughs> next week is February fourth or fifth, something like that. <coughs> so it's not due next week. It's the week due the week after that. And um, that means that uh, next week, to, to this week we do chapter three, next week chapter four. And the exercises are concerning uh, chapters one through four. So once you have that, you should be able to answer them, no problem. OK. Um, so the exercise is on this uh, page, mandatory exercises. It's described here, and it's number one. And I got to it by, yes, that seems to work, yeah. OK, so <coughs> um, it's under required exercises. Yeah. Can you show me where you what you did? I'll have to ask you next week. It's the one next to video. This one, um, yeah. above it. Above it. Yeah, oh, this one. It's okay, it's unmarked. Okay, yep. Okay. Um, I think maybe it's too loud. Can lower it a bit. Hello, is that better? No. Can you hear it? OK. OK, so <coughs> um, yeah, so you look for required exercises, and that's where you find a required exercise. And then the lecture schedule. I uh, never, that's not the lecture schedule. Um, lecture schedule. So this week we're doing chapter 3. Next week we're doing chapter 4. And uh, the f following week, when your exercise is due, it, we're doing chapter five. And we'll go over the exercise in lecture as well. OK, uh, February 25th, there's no lecture. So you don't need to come here. Uh, you can work together if you want to. So once again, I've modified the notes to fit this uh, book, which is the sixth edition. Okay. 
Um, it's the sixth edition of the book. <coughs> And we're going to be talking about the organization, uh, the project structure, and uh, project man management structures, and the organizational culture. Okay, okay so um, just to <coughs> recap a bit, uh, the, or the challenges to organizational projects are that they are not like everyday projects uh, that are like uh, this uh, standard routine projects, but they're actually, there's something unique about them. They're of short duration, and uh, there's something that has to be done within that short duration. And it could involve different parts of the organization. So uh, typically it's uh, multidisciplinary in nature and cross-functional in nature. Organizations may be traditionally broken down by functions, so you have different people doing different functional work within the organization. So this creates some dilemmas between who's responsible for what in, in the organization. There can be many projects going on and many activities going on in the organization, and you need to know who's in charge of what. So <coughs> you need to choose the appropriate project management structure that balances between the needs of the project and the needs of the organization. Uh, there's different ways in which to organize <coughs> the project management structures. Uh, one way is to use a functional organization. This is the existing organization. And you can have different segments of the project that are delegated to different functional units. And you have um, coordination is maintained through normal management channels and it's used when there is interest in one functional area that dominates what the project is about. So it uses ex the existing functional organizational structure. I think there's a picture of it next. Yes. So <coughs> this would be an example of a typical functional organization. Here you have like um, it's just as an example, Delta Manufacturing Inc. with the president. They have human resources and finance and administration. And they have different functional areas in the organization. And marketing, engineering, manufacturing, and procurement. And <coughs> it could be that uh, there is something that's um, the, the project coordinator that's in charge of this needs people from all of these parts of the organization. But then maybe most of the work is, is focused in one of the functional areas. And in that case, they might <coughs> just have, um, uh, they might use the existing structure. So this manager is in charge of these people, and this manager is in charge of these people, and so forth. But uh, you, there's a lot of, there has to be communication between the functional managers and the project coordinator. But they use, just the existing hierarchy. <coughs> so the advantages of using this type of approach is that there are uh, no structural changes to the organization. It looks basically the same as it did before. It's flexible because the, um, man the project manager can pull from different parts of the organization. Uh, the project manager still has access to the in-depth expertise from the different units, and it's um, it's easy be when the project is finished, everybody goes back to their same, uh, there is, they're already in their same uh, group as before, and they go back to what they were doing before. Uh, the disadvantages are that it can lack focus because people are not focused on the project, they're focused on what they do day-to-day -day basis. Uh, it can be uh, that the project work is poorly integrated from the different units into one uh, project. It can be slower because um, there's a lot of communication that has to go on between the departments and the managers and, uh, and the project manager. And that this takes a lot of negotiation to get the um, different department managers to get people to do work on the project for, for the project manager. So this type of uh, extra communication and the need to integrate can, can make it slower to 
get the project done. And also, it can, uh, the people that are part of the project don't feel like they own the project. It's nothing special to them. They're still uh, identifying themselves within their own uh, existing hierarchy, or within their own, their own um, organizational structure. So if somebody's <coughs> in the engineering department, they may associate themselves with the engineering department and not with this special project that's going on, which means maybe we want to uh, make the next um, um, you know, uh, virtual heads-up display or something like that. <coughs> Another <coughs> approach is to use uh, dedicated teams. And you have the teams that are um, separate units under the leadership of a full-time project manager. So that means that the, some, the CEO picks a project manager for a task, and that project manager picks members of their team and then they say, OK, you're going to work on this project full time, and you're not going to be doing other things. You're not going to prioritize anything else except this project, and you're working for me, the project manager. Uh, the, the, in the, this is called a projectized organization, where the projects are the dominant form of business, and the functional departments are responsible for providing support for the team. So uh, if the project manager needs something, they go to the functional departments, and they get the resources from that department. They're dedicated to the project, and they're not doing anything else. So here you have uh, an example where you still have this traditional hierarchy here, and then you have a special project manager that pulls members out from the, the hierarchy and puts them in the project team, and they're just doing their thing on their own. So <coughs> the advantages of the dedicated team is that it's simple. And a lot of times it's used for very um, 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 strategic projects, innovative projects, uh, that you want to get something out fast. And you want them to be able to produce a new product or a new process very quickly. Uh, and it, it has also the advantage that it's very cohesive, because everybody within the team knows what's going on. And <coughs> it also can be cross-functional in integration because it can pull expertise from different parts of the organization as well. But it's all dedicated. What the disadvantages are is that it can be expensive because you have people that are not able to work on multiple projects at the same time. <coughs> they're not able to work in their functional departments. So they're only in, uh, involved in this specific project. So you need extra resources to do that, or dedicated resources. <coughs> it can create the internal strife because maybe uh, the, the members of the functional departments, they don't like to give up their good people. And um, they also, um, it could be limited technological expertise. If you don't draw from uh, all the right groups, you only have the people that are in, within the project team that are contributing to the project, and you don't have the whole organization contributing to that. And, it, and when the project is completed, then you often the people that are members of this team, they need to go back to their functional uh, groups in the organization. And this can be a problem, because then they don't know where they fit in. They may have fallen behind, or they don't feel like they fit in that other culture, because the project team might have had a different culture from the rest of the organization. So it's a harder transition back to um, the Delhi uh, business. <coughs> so the, um, the projects um, could look something like this, uh, where you have the, the, the main structure, and then you have a uh, project manager that is created for one project, and then they pull together and people from different parts of the organization. And then uh, you have um, a project manager that's in charge of another project and pulling together people from different parts of the organization. Uh, the in-between approach is called a matrix structure. And even within the matrix structure, there's like weak matrices, balanced matrices, and strong matrices. 
uh, this hybrid organizational structure is overlaid on top of the normal functioning structure so that there's two chains of commands. You have the project manager and you have the functional manager. They're both in charge and they're in charge of different things. You have the uh, project participants. Uh, they report simultaneously to both managers. And then you have the matrix structure optimizes resources because it allows the human resources, the people to work on different projects at the same time or to also be look, working on their functional duties at the same time. <coughs> it can achieve greater integration of expertise and uh, project requirements. So an example of the matrix organization structure is that you have, um, this is the main uh, structure of the organization, and then you have different projects and um, uh, so this is project administration and your project A, B, and C. And then you have different people from different organizations, from different parts of the organization working on project A or working on project B or working on project C. And as you go across the organization, there may be like two people working on project A from this department and a half a day or half time um, person working from testing from from the testing department on project A and so forth. So you can see how uh, people are shared. So you might have the same person here working on two different projects. Um, and like it could be like one day a week or something like that. This indicates the amount of time that they're spending on the project. So the the project manager and the functional manager are usually concerned about different things. And um, they have a split responsibility in the matrix structure. So the project manager might be asking uh, what has to be done, uh, when should the task be done, how much money is available for the task, uh, how well will the project, uh, the total project uh, be done. And the functional manager is, is asking, when will it be done? And how will the project involve my normal function activities? And how well has the function input been integrated, functional input been integrated? So they're, they're concerned with their department uh, um, concerns. And the negotiated issues, they have to come to agreement on is who does what, uh, when will they be doing it, and um, why will the test be done? And is it satisfactory? So there's kind of different personal uh, issues. Uh, let's see. Okay, so on page 75 is uh, where this table comes from. And they say that, <coughs> just to point out, the weak matrix is similar to the functional approach. And that the only differences here is that there's two, there's two um, uh, leaders. There's a project manager and there's a functional manager. But the, um, okay. Yeah, so in the weak matrix, the project manager doesn't have that much power. It's the functional manager that kind of has more power in deciding uh, how things are run. So the project manager acts as a staff assistant who draws schedules and checklists. And the project manager has indirect authority for expediting and, and monitoring the project. The functional manager calls most of the shots and decides who uh, does what and when the work is completed. So 
So that's in the weak matrix, the functional manager is stronger. In the balance matrix, they both have uh, kind of the same um, amount of power, but um, one decides uh, what gets done and the other does and when it gets done and uh, the other one decides who's going to be working on the project so it says the balance matrix um, uh, the project manager establishes the overall plan for completing the project the functional managers are responsible for assigning personnel uh, and execute their segments of the project so here you have that the functional managers decide who's going to work on the project and the project managers decide what they're going to do and when they're going to do it. But there is a more negotiation uh, between uh, what actually has to get done and who's going to work at what time. So that's in the balance matrix. And then in the strong matrix, the project manager has more, more power. So the project manager decides uh, basically uh, who's going to do it and when it's going to be done but uh, the project, uh, the functional manager is more like a subcontract partner in that case. Uh, so yeah, I guess I'd, it was on the next slide. So here we have um, the functional, uh, or the, this would be like the weak matrix, or the lightweight form of the matrix is more functional oriented. And the, or, uh, the authority of the functional manager uh, dominates the, the project manager. And, and the project manager has indirect authority. So the functional manager is the big boss, you could say. In the balanced or the middleweight form of the matrix, we have uh, this is the more traditional matrix where the project manager sets the overall plan and the functional manager determines how to do the work. And who's going, he's assigning personnel, who's going to be working on your project. And when I have time to give you this person, I give you this person. Uh, the uh, strong or the heavyweight form of the matrix resembles the project team uh, where the project manager has broader control, decides when and what specialists do, and has final say on major decisions. So the project manager is the big boss, and the functional departments act like subcontractors for the project. Um, the advantages of the matrix form is that it can be efficient in getting things uh, done quickly with the project, assigning people when they are needed, and then they can also be working in other areas when they're not needed. It has a strong project focus. Uh, it's easier for post-project transition because people still belong to other departments and they're not um, completely isolated. And it's uh, flexible in terms of where to put resources. The resources can be uh, decided on that they are needed in this area for a certain period of time and then they can be shared across projects. The disadvantage of the matrix form is that it can cause conflicts between the project manager and the functional manager. They have to come to agreement. There's, this, uh, there's these questions in the middle that have to be negotiated. It can cause infighting within the organization. It can be stressful for the employees that have to answer to two different bosses. And it also can be slower to accomplish what you want to accomplish because there's this extra communication of negotiation between the project manager and the functional manager. So the disadvantages also depend on the type of organizational culture. So if the organization is uh, used to sharing responsibilities and giving people for different projects, and there's, this is part of their culture that they are contributing to the organization's uh, strategic uh, projects, then it will be probably less uh, conflicts, less infighting, uh, take less time to negotiate, be less stressful. So it depends on the culture of the organization. Uh, so how do you know which kind of organizational structure is 
uh, right uh, and what type of management structure you, that you, you choose for your organization. So you have to ask questions like how important is the project to the firm's success? Uh, what percentage of the core work involves the projects? And what level of resources are available? So it's about um, is it strategic or not? Uh, is it a large part of the company's activities to do these projects? And do we have enough people to dedicate the projects or do they have to be shared across projects and across functional areas? So to answer some of these questions, we would say um, for the organizational considerations, uh, the, the book says if 75% or more of the work involves projects, then you should consider a fully projectized approach to organization. If the organization has both standard products and projects, uh, then you would probably use a matrix approach. So you might be a standard product would be something you're already selling, and you might uh, be give, doing like um, this as a ongoing service. People are already your existing customers and accounting services, for example. Um, but if you want to do something special and uh, new and innovative and um, then uh, this would be a combination of something old and something new, and then you should use a matrix approach. Uh, if, you have, if your company has very few projects, uh, then you can maybe use uh, dedicated teams that you pull together on an as-need basis. So it, you just create these teams to work on the project. When the project is done, then people go back to their functional departments. Uh, for sharing limited resources, it's usually typical to use a matrix approach because you don't, people cannot uh, be hired just for this project, and you need to <coughs> be able to share them also with the functional work as well. Uh, they suggest that the first time you try the matrix approach, you should try a weak matrix first because you get less resistance from the functional managers. In addition to the <coughs> organizational considerations, you should also think about what are the project considerations. <coughs> what is the characteristics of the project? Um, and as these uh, factors below in red are higher, uh, then you, sh you need to have more control. <coughs> the project manager needs to have more control. They need to have more autonomy and more authority. So if the project is very large, if it's of strategic importance, if it's uh, innovative, if you need to integrate different departments, it's complex. If you have environmental complexity, so you have a lot of external uh, stakeholders as well. And if you have uh, budget and time constraints and stability of resources requirements, all of these things, if, if they're higher of importance, then you, the project manager needs more control so that they can control these factors. You, you might use uh, dedicated teams or a strong matrix <coughs> with the projects that are uh, large, complex, need input from many departments, frequent ass assessments from customers, high innovation, and high strategic value. Another way of doing this is that you can mix and match organizational structures with different categories of projects. So the book talked about one company that had 50 plus projects, and they used different structures for different types of projects. So if they have um, uh, projects that are considered advanced development, these are high risk endeavors and creation of breakthrough products or processes. In that case, they use dedicated teams for those projects. If they have <coughs> uh, projects that are called platform projects, these are medium risk projects <coughs> that, um, where they have a system upgrades that yield new products and services, uh, then they use a strong matrix. And if they have uh, incremental projects, which are low risk, short term, and that's supposed to be that, 
involve minor adjustments in existing products and service and processes, um, then they use a weak matrix. And there can be something in between, like a medium. So there's like there's no strict boundaries on this, but some sort of a um, a grade between weak and strong. <coughs> so these are examples of different kinds of projects. Uh, what I would like everyone to do now is to look at page 91 in the book, and we'll do exercise number two together. <coughs> So exercise number two says, uh, you work for a for LL company, which manufactures high-end optical scopes for hunting rifles. LL company has been in the market for leader for the past 20 years and has decided to diversify by applying its technology to develop top quality binocular. What kind of project management structure would you recommend they use for this project? What information uh, would you like to have to make this recommendation and why? So you have a company that's uh, like a rifle company and they're making new binoculars. And what type of, and they've been in business for 20 years. So what kind of project management structure would you recommend for this company? And what kind of information do you need to make that decision? So everybody just write down a few notes on what you think. And then we'll take some survey. Page 91, number 2. Page nine, uh, it's at the end, exercises at the end of chapter 3. 
It can be, if you're looking at the version 5 of the book, it can be a different page number. Uh, so it's exercises at the end of chapter 3. It's exercise number 2. Uh, it's, on, it's about uh, you work for LL company. So you, you work for LL company. So it's chapter 3. So if you look at the... Yeah, go up. <coughs> 90, um, 91. Like okay, go up more. Go like maybe some before page 90. Before. before. Yeah, okay, wait. Go down one. Go down one. So that would up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this one? Number two. Okay, thank you. <laughs> So has anyone made a decision yet? got quiet. That means everyone knows now, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, just tell me, which, which kind of organizational structure did you choose? A weak matrix. A weak matrix. Okay, so that means that uh, the functional manager has most of the um, control, and the project manager has less control. Is there a reason why you picked that structure? Okay. Okay. Um, so they're just they're making binoculars, but that's something that they've done before. You're saying. So you're saying it. There's not much of a um, strategic value to this. It's just like a low risk project. Okay. Um, okay, but uh, that's fine. Um, does anyone else have a different opinion that there might be different kind of organization?
it could be that they're making something new because it says applying its technology to develop a top quality binocular. So if you, if you consider this as a strategic project, then would you pick a different form of, yeah? Dedicated teams, okay. Okay, so you consider this um, something new and unique and requiring a team to develop this. Usually a dedicated team would develop this very quickly. Um, if you were to choose this type of dedicated team structure, what kind of information do you need to make this decision? What do you need to know about the company or about the project? Okay, so let me just repeat you because they won't hear you on the microphone. So you need to know um, how much money, how, it, how much it's going to cost, uh, how much time it will take to develop it, and um, what was the other thing you said? Uh, members. Members who will? Uh, members for the members for the project, okay. Um, you need to know if, um, if they have enough resources to share on the project, meaning that if you have a dedicated team, they're only working on this new product, and then they have to be drawn from other parts of the company. And then if, those, if this company can afford people not to work on their regular functional areas, then that's fine. They can go into a dedicated group. But if they need them to continue to work on the other areas, then there has to be some other kind of um, form that they select. But if they have enough people, then they can do it. So uh, it really depends on how much, how they can reallocate their resources. So, but these are the kinds of questions you need to know. Um, so how do you choose the right structure? You need to know, uh, is it important to the firm's success? Is it strategic? Uh, is it a big part of the company's uh, work? Is this a big part or a small part of the company? Is this new project going to be what they're depending on? Or is it going to be just an additional item to give them more profit? And what are the resources that are available? Can the company afford to put people dedicated to this project, or do they have to share them with other functional areas? And to answer those questions, you have to look at what the organization has, uh, how, how, they're, how many projects they're doing, what, how important is it in their resources. And then you need to look at the type of project it is, so these two areas. Okay, we'll take a break here, and in the next part, we'll talk about um, the culture. <laughs>